Hi there, brand builders. I'm Mash Ponigala, brand strategist. All right, in this series of videos, we've been looking at the five pillar brand strategy. In the previous two videos, we looked at who your customers are, why your brand exists. And in this video, we're looking at the pillar, what is your brand personality? So I've structured these pillars into primary tasks, like three primary tasks, and then each primary task is broken down into three action items. So for this pillar, the brand personality pillar, the, the three primary tasks will be identifying our brand archetype, creating the brand vocabulary, and then finally creating the brand voice and tone. So figuring out the archetypes, creating vocabulary, and then finally identifying or creating the voice and tone or the tone and voice, these all these come together to make your brand personality. Now, when people talk about the brand personality, they are really referring to the feeling that they get when they interact with any of the touch points of the brand, right? So for instance, the shopping experience, that is interacting with the brand, right? And that also determines um, how you feel about the brand. Um, the checkout process, the messaging, so all these things or touch points where your personality comes out or your brand personality comes out. It's just like people. For instance, you met me at a, uh, let's say, I don't know, at an event, right? Um, and this is a casual event, maybe it's a party. And you know, we're, we stand around, we having a beer or whatever, or, or an old fashioned, and we're chatting. Are we talking about our personal things, maybe our family, uh, you know, the vacation we had. There, you see a certain personality. From me, right? So you know uh, whether, or at least you could gauge whether I'm a fun person, maybe I'm a serious person, um, I'm a happy person, or a warm person, maybe a cold. You get that, right? So th there's a personality, personality that comes across. Now, the same me, let's say you are on a one on one strategy coaching session with me, right? So let's say we're working to try and help your brand um, double your revenue in the next 90 days. Now, then we have a lot of Zoom calls like this, for example, right, one-on-one. -on -one. And there, my personality is completely different because it's more professional and I have a mission. My mission is to double your revenue in 90 days. Um, so there is no uh, beating around the bush. Um, I might even come across as harsh because it's a boot camp. Um, because I want the framework to be followed exactly. I want activities to be done. I may not put up with laziness, all these things, right? So it's a different personality there. Just like that, your brand should have a personality that comes across and that has to be carefully crafted. Because if you don't craft your brand personality, then what happens is that your audience will determine what that personality is, right? So if you don't manage that narrative, if you don't um, create that narrative, then the audience is free to determine what the brand is. They might just say, well, this brand sucks. Not the product or services. Sometimes, you know, you come across brands whose product or service you'll do like, but you don't like the brand. It could be, I mean, there's something off. You don't know what it is. It could be the messaging. It could be what they say, the kind of message, the tone of that messaging. Or it could be just their, their visual identity, right? So that the branding looks off. Um, it could be a number of things. So it's very important for you to determine what your personality is and to put that narrative out there, to control that narrative. Okay, so the three primary tasks within this um, pillar of the brand personality. The first one is, your brand archetype. So you need to figure out your brand archetype. And for that, you need to ask three questions. The first one is, what is my primary archetype? And this one aligns or opposes, and I'll tell you more about it. What is the secondary archetype? And what is the archetypal mix? Okay, the three questions seem similar, right? Well, archetypes is a very deep topic. I have done a complete series on archetypes, right? It's about 10, 12 different videos. And you may have heard me talk about the customer archetype, the audience archetype in one of my previous videos, right? In this series, in this, because look, your audience has archetypes and you have to determine what your audience archetypes uh, uh, is, what is that mix? And then you have to create your brand archetype, either aligning or opposing with the audience archetype, right? So if let's say your audience archetype is, I don't know, um, a hero, right? So. And I'm not gonna talk, talk too much about what a hero archetype is and what the characteristics are. There's a separate video for that. I did a complete video. I will leave a link about here, just watch it. But let's say your audience is a hero. Now, you have an option to be a hero 
archetype yourself. That means a hero is actually on a journey. Now, let's go back to an example, Lord of the Rings. If you watch Lord of the Rings, the original Lord of the Rings, you got Frodo, who's the hero of that story. He is on a journey, he's on a path, and he has, to, he has a mission to accomplish. Now that's a hero. Then, Gandalf is a, um, is a character, of course, and is going to help our hero reach that mission. Now Gandalf is a wizard, and he plays the role of a, a, a sage archetype. Um, a sage or a wizard, um, you know, it's, it's, Gandalf is not a hero. He's not playing the hero archetype, right? That means Gandalf is also not, um, he has his own mission and then he's off onto the adventure. No, he is there to help um, our hero. Just like that, once you know your audience archetype, you can decide, do I want to be a hero archetype to them? Do I want to be a sage or do I want to be a leader archetype? Because depending on your market segment, depending on the audience psychographics, certain uh, some sec some type of audience will react better to an alignment of the archetypes. That means you and I are the same kind of a thing. Some um, they react better to an opposition. For instance, if you look at perfumes, perfume brands, they always have usually an opposing kind of archetype. So they play an opposing role because they know that that, that that kind of opposing um, dynamic will attract people to buy their perfumes. And it's, it's a very deep topic. I, I won't go much into that in this video, but I'm sure if you research online, Google it, you'll understand what the perfume industry is doing, for, for instance. Okay, so that is the first question. What is my primary archetype? The second one is, what is the secondary archetype, right? And this is the driver. So like I said in the video about the audience archetypes, um, you could have only one archetype, that's fine, that's fantastic, perfect. If the primary archetype also aligns with what drives you, so this is going back to your brand purpose, this goes back to your brand vision, what drives you? Uh, what are the things that drive your brand, right? Uh, maybe it is, I don't know, uh, having a positive impact, that's what drives you. So having a positive impact, check that, what archetype uh, has those characters of, of uh, having a positive impact? For instance, if you go back to Lord of the Rings, Frodo, of course, is the hero, you got Sam, right? Sam is Frodo's friend and he actually accompanies um, Frodo on that journey to Mount Doom to, to, to destroy the, the Ring of Evil, right? The Evil Ring. Now Sam is, he's not a hero there. Of course he's not a hero. He's a friend. Now there, um, Sam wants to have a positive impact in the world. He also wants to have a positive impact on um, on Frodo, right? So you so you got, you got Gandalf, who is a sage, so he's guiding, uh, he's the mentor, he sort of, you know, brings to light all the things that, that the hero doesn't know. And then Sam is a supporter, right? So he's playing the role of the friend, uh, the ally, uh, someone who then provides that support to have a positive impact. So you could have a mix. If you have only one archetype, that's fine. But if you also feel like there are other things that your brand stands for, that your brand's characteristic has, then it's okay to have a mix. Like you could have a mix of the hero and, I don't know, um, the, the magician, right? You could have a mix of this. You could have, that's the third one, which is the archetypal mix includes the driver, what drives us. So you've got the archetypes that drives, then you've got fears. What do we fear? What does our brand fear, right? I'm not talking about fear of not getting sales or fear of not making money. No, what does it fear in terms of our purpose? Maybe not having the two to five year impact is a fear. So for that, what could be the percentage? So this archetypal mix is deciding how much percentage of the primary and how much of the secondary. And that choice is based on your fears, the fears of the brand, okay? Like I said, this is a deep topic, right? So I'm sure you're probably pretty confused. Um, and I'm already into 11 minutes of this video just talking about archetypes. There are a series of videos that I've done. Please go take a look. I will leave a link about to the playlist I've got a playlist um, and just, just watch them, right? And I've also written um, a series of articles on that. So I will leave a link below to those articles. Go check them out. Spend some time, right? Take a week. Just understand archetypes. And I'm, I'm telling you, you're going to thank me for that. You're going to appreciate the power of archetypes. Okay. Next. The next primary task is brand core words. So we ask the questions. What are the core words from each archetype? We then turn those into action phases and then we create a hashtag and a tagline. Now, if you're watching closely, in the previous video, when we were talking about 
why your brand exists. One of the action items was, one of the primary tasks was brand vocabulary. You might say, okay, so why am I repeating this? Okay, I already told you in that context, that vocabulary, go check out that video. Let me tell you in this context. Here, what are we trying to do? We're trying to answer the question, what is your brand personality? It's that third one, right? It's the third pillar. What is your brand personality? Now, the vocabulary here that I'm talking about, right, is to determine your personality. And these words will then come into marketing and you will use them in marketing to express your personality. So the core words from the first archetype. So from your archetypes, you bring some core words. And the reason is each archetype has a set of characteristics. It has a set of words that communicate what that archetype is. You take those words, pick the ones that are appropriate, that align, and those are your core words. Then turn each word into an action phrase, just like we did with core values, because words by themselves, they do nothing. You got to turn them into action uh, phrases. Again, from the context of the personality, right? So turn them into action phrases. Once you have these set of action phrases, then you create a hashtag and a tagline. I know it's not that easy, but for the purpose of this video, that's all I will say. Uh, how to create a hashtag? Well, you got to research that. You got to figure that out. Um, and um, a tagline. Now, do you need a hashtag and tagline? Yes, you do need a tagline. Yes, even if you don't use it in the public, a tagline is, uh, and it'll come up in the next pillar. Um, so at this moment, if you don't have a good tagline, it's okay. You don't need to create it at this moment. But when you get to the brand story pillar, we will figure out a few things that I think will help you create the tagline. But for now, it's good to have a hashtag and maybe even a rudimentary form of a tagline, just a basic one, right? Which you can then tweak later in the next pillar. Uh, when we get to uh, the next one, the next pillar will be asking the question, why should people care about your brand? And caring is about storytelling, right? So in that, we will talk about that. So that is the second uh, primary task, which is brand core words. We pick core words from each archetype. We turn them into action phrases. We then create a hashtag and a tagline. Okay, before I go to the third and final uh, kind of um, primary task for this pillar, um, I just wanna ask you, do you see the power of working through different kind of um, primary tasks and then breaking them down into action items? Do you see the power of the brand personality? Why you need a brand personality? Because it determines how you appear, the perception your audience has about your brand is based on your personality. And if you don't craft your personality, then the audience will craft their own and you cannot control that. This you can, this narrative you can control. If you're careful creating this personality, you're crafting it and then you're then using that in the messaging, which is another pillar. When you're doing that, then you control the narrative, okay? All right, so if you're finding value in this video, click the like button right now, hit the bell icon. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe right now to this channel. There's lots more coming. Okay, let's go quickly back to the third primary task, which is brand voice and tone. For this, we ask the following questions. What is the personality approach that I need to take with my audience? What are the brand characteristics that align with everything that we've done before? And then we create the tone and voice. Well, you could be voice and tone, and I purposely put them as tone and voice. Uh, the reason I put them because tone and voice, they're interchangeable, right? And I'll explain more. Okay, so the first question, what is the personality approach? When I say personality approach, it is you deciding how you want to approach your audience with your personality, right? So based on the core words, the kind of archetypes and the vocabulary that we have built so far, you could then decide and say, out of all that, what is the predominant thread? Because when you look at all the words, and then you look at the archetypes you picked, you could find maybe that there is a predominant, there are two or three different threads approach. Uh, one is a, a very warm kind of a one. Uh, there's also an edgy uh, tinge to it. Maybe some of the, maybe the archetype you picked has some edginess to it. Then you decide whether you want to go with the warm or you want to go with the edginess. Maybe there's one super friendly. There's one very humorous. There's one which has a serious corporate tone to it, right? You need to pick the approach and say, which of these approaches, which of these would align with the audience? And by the way, you can always change this later on, but it's going to cost you quite a lot. Once you establish your personality, your tone and all that, to change that, it's going to... So pay attention now, work hard now to set this up. And you're going to save a lot of time and money down the line. Okay, so... This approach, if you are a sage, you're gonna be a guide, mentor to your audience, you need to decide that. Or maybe you wanna be a leader, you wanna lead your audience, you gotta decide that, and so on. Next, you gotta decide on the brand characteristics. 
So that is the second action item. These are characteristics. So the brand characteristics examples it could be something like welcoming, warm, assured, authority. They're the same as approach, but these are these go beyond that. Are, are we a fun personality? And for this, I often find it useful to ask if our brand was an animal, what kind of an animal would it be? Right? So that gets us thinking about the characteristics that could we could imbue into the brand. Right? So there's an exercise you could do. I've written an article about that, or I think I also made a video. Uh, check that out. Then finally, create the tone and voice. So creating the tone and voice again, um, it's I can't really go into in depth because it's 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 a it's a process. Uh, you're identifying and you're saying, okay, to appear friendly or to appear uh, as an approach to be a humorous brand, what kind of voice and tone should I? Be? Within humor, you could have edgy humor. You could have, of course, friendly humor. Uh, you could have hilarious humor. Uh, you could have dark humor. That is what you decide when it comes to the tone and voice. Now, the tone and voice is a little more flexible. You can have a tone and voice now and then change it. You can have different tone and voices depending on campaigns, depending on subset of audience and all that. But you need to start with a tone and voice. So have that tone and voice. Uh, it's very important to have the tone and voice. All right. So for the brand personality, we've looked at identifying the brand archetypes, figuring out and creating our brand vocabulary, and then figuring out and identifying and creating our brand voice and tone. This these three primary tasks and the action items under each of them, they answer our third pillar question. What is your brand personality? Identifying and creating your brand personality is, is a, a million dollar uh, uh, asset for your brand. Pay attention to it. What we did in the first pillar, which is of course, identifying the ideal customer profile, knowing exactly who we are serving. And then in the second pillar, identifying and understanding why your brand exists. Know what we stand for. What does our brand mean? And then bringing all that together into the brand personality. This is where the magic happens. And then we got next two pillars. The next one is why should people care about your brand? That's about the brand story. And then finally, what should you say to your audience? That is the messaging framework. All right. So if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, do it right now. Hit the bell icon. You can see the value that I'm providing um, in these videos uh, with, with my, with my uh, free five pillar brand strategy ebook. Download that. I've written a series of articles on these. I've also linked them in that ebook. And then you have the series of videos together, all these together, put together. It's almost like a $20,000 brand strategy for you. It'll help you create the best brand possibly can. You leave your, um, what do you call, your competitors behind, you know, in the dust. Okay, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter. My handle is at Bonigala or follow me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. Ask me questions on LinkedIn and I'll try and answer. Or you can leave comments below in this video and I'll try and answer. All right, till my next video, be happy, be prosperous, and always be building your brand. Take care.